Hey, hey, Neo Life, here we are, May 28th of 2024, and these are my thoughts for today. And, you know, my, uh, my thoughts for the day are predicated upon the past 24 hours and things that have occurred in the past 24 hours. And to some extent, then I measure those 24-hour experiences against the last 33 years' experiences and the things that stick out of my mind are the things that I would bring to you on this thought for the day. And so first, in yesterday's segment, I talked about the basic leadership development process in the entire direct selling industry. And so, of course, in Needle Life, that being a, the conduct of a series of home business reviews, HBRs, or private small group presentations. And upon reflection, I realized that I left out some of the most important con content about that process. And the first bit is to understand what is the primary purpose? What is the primary purpose of the conduct of that HBR? And the reason that I pose that question to me and let you listen is because I had a couple of people in the organization. I've been encouraging, obviously, people on almost on a daily basis. I've been encouraging people to take ownership of your business. If you are simply referring people to me or to some other leader for me to make the presentations on your behalf, then what are you? Well, then you are a part of my business, and that's fine. If, on the other hand, you are opening your home, you are the person who's taking ownership, taking control, you are the primary driver, then, of course, it is your business and other people join you in it. A real simple thought. If you are a part of my business, you will have a certain financial outcome. If, on the other hand, you take ownership of the business and the business success is as a result of your efforts, as opposed to simply being a conduit to a system, uh, then the outcomes are dramatically different. In each case, we find our own places and our own positioning in it. But uh, I had a phone call, actually a text message earlier today, from one of those people that I had encouraged to do a first, an initial home business review this past week. And, and he did. And, uh, and it didn't go especially well. It didn't go exactly the way that he wanted it to go. And, uh, and so he was expressing a little bit of frustration. I said, no, 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 please understand. It went exactly the way it was supposed to go. You misunderstood the primary purpose. What was the primary purpose of that first home business review? It was for you to experience it. So therefore, if you did it, then the primary purpose was met and it was a success. They said, but Randy, the contacts that I invited, they didn't come. I said, fantastic. We can learn from that. If the candidate did not come, then you see in every single situation, every question that is posed, every circumstance that is brought to my attention, I take that circumstance or question and I turn it back to the process. I turn it back to the 10 steps to getting started correctly, or I turn it back to the ladder of escalation. And so, well, Randy, we opened our home and the people that we thought were going to come didn't come and only one person came and it wasn't the one that we really wanted. And, you know, he or she didn't really want to do the business. Said, oh, it was fantastic. What was so fantastic about it? You did it. And because you did it the first time, that means the next time will be easier. But now let's go back and take a look. What would be the contributors to that home business review having been a great experience for you? I believe it was a great experience for you anyway, but for you to perceive it to have been a great experience, then what would need to have been done differently? Well, it starts back with step number six. And when I say step number six, now my audience in unison, they say, oh yes, yeah, step number six simple activity of writing down a list of names to populate our candidate list immediately, a group of people with whom we have positive relationship that we can invite to our first presentations. The extension of step number six is learning to live our life today in such a way that our candidate list is growing in front of us so that we have more people to invite next week and next week and the week after that. Well, so if people were not there, then we can go back and we can troubleshoot. What was the effort? What went into the construct of the candidate list? How was the candidate prepared? You know, for many years in my in my business dialogue, I described that as grooming the candidate. And then unfortunately, society is kind of sick. And now I find that predators groom children and people and you know, predators groom women on the internet and so on. So I've had to change that dialogue. Unfortunately, it's not grooming anyone for anything. It's instead preparing the candidate to properly receive the message. And so that has to do with uh, what was our interaction. Remember that if at step number six, I've created a candidate list and I've created that candidate list principally by listening to things that other people want to need, then that makes the invitation that I propose something that is addressing their need as opposed to me trying to forward my objectives. And that, of course, will have a totally different outcome. So the first thing that we could look at if the attendance wasn't what we hoped it would be was, well, what was the effort that we made in advance in terms of preparing the candidate such that he or she would properly receive the message? And there's, of course, an entire training sequence that goes around that, the idea of learning to live our life in such a way that our candidate list grows in front of us, learning at the invitation that the most important thing we can do is listen first and having now gathered the information so we can react to a need or a want or a desire expressed by the candidate. 
Uh, now we can make a different kind of invitation addressing their need as opposed to our agenda. And then we can, we can contemplate what was the work that was done in terms of the ladder of escalation? Did we utilize a properly constructed script and lob the ball across the net to let the tool talk? And did we at that time say, please, after you've reviewed this material, just let me know if you'd like to continue the conversation and send the next, next, uh, next link over the net as I describe it. You see, no matter what happened, we get a chance to say, and what might I have done differently that would have caused the outcome to be more in line with what my hopes and objectives were when I set that process in motion. And so you see, it's a tremendously effective exercise, even if no one showed up for that home business review. Well, three or four or five people showed up, but nobody seemed to want to do it. Hey, no problem. Then we can take a look at that. Once again, we can go back to the entire sequence. Why was the candidate there? Why were they there? Because you listened to find out what they want and you're helping them meet their objectives. See if a person is there because um, if a person is there looking for a solution to a problem, a challenge or a desired opportunity, so if they're looking for something they want, they will find in new life. If they're not looking for something they want, if they're there to get us off their back, well, I won't be surprised at all if they don't find. And so if people didn't come, what do I look at first? How was the candidate prepared? How was the invitation extended? Was the ladder of escalation followed? If people did come, but they didn't act, well, then I get to look at how was the candidate prepared? How did I invite? Was the ladder of escalation followed? And now I can add to it. And what was my presentation method? Was I prepared? Did I start on time? Did I finish on time? I can go back through and I can I can uh, review what Randy described, what I taught in the uh, uh, home business review basics or home business review format. Did I follow the process? If I didn't follow the process, why did I not? Am I willing to get myself closer to what's been described as the center line? Did the presentation take too long? Did it not start on time? You see, that which is measured can be improved. What was my interaction with each candidate? Did I ask them why they're here so I could address their needs instead of mine? You see, when the person contacted me and said, oh, I had my first home business review and it didn't go the way that I hoped it would go. It went exactly the way that I hoped it would go because my new member had the willingness to step out and do something he or she had not done before so they would have a chance to learn from that experience. Remember, it is a positive side effect. It is a happy circumstance. If someone comes to our first home business review and they join us that night or they join us sometime in the future, if they didn't, then what did it do? It gave us a chance to learn, grow, develop, and become. It gave us the experience. It made us more able to act successfully the next time. And remember, I've never said to a single person, host one home business review, and it'll likely be a great, wonderful experience. It'll make you want to do the next one. And before too long, you're making a stack of money. I never said that. What I said was, Decide in advance how skillful you want to become, how good do you want to be at it, and then make a decision. How many home business reviews are you going to conduct over the course of the next 52 weeks in your own home, not as a support mechanism for another? How many home business reviews are you going to conduct in your own home? And then don't measure the outcome for 52 weeks. Measure the inputs. Don't measure the outcome always in our business. Remember that time capital is the capital which we must invest. And as we invest that time capital, by definition, what is occurring? We're gathering knowledge, we're developing skill, and along the way, if we're willing, we'll also refine our character in such a way that more and more people would seek to be in association with us. And so my first thoughts on this day have to do with, um, I've been urging and will continue to urge people to take ownership of your business. If what you're seeking is a uh, relatively more modest part-time income, fair enough. I welcome you here, and I would like to help you every way that I can. And that means that I welcome your participation at whatever level. You be a conduit to the system, and don't feel like you have to do anything you don't want to do if your income objectives are more modest. If your income objectives are more grand, then I will tell you in advance, you're going to have to become willing to do a few things you'd rather not do. Why? Because we don't do anything for the first time and do it especially well. Pride ego they act um, they act against us because we hesitate all of us it's a nature part of human nature we hesitate to do that which we may not do very well why because of self-centered fear because we're so very concerned about what someone else thinks about us um, because of all the seeds incorrect seeds that have been planted in us over the course of our lives and that then leads me to the very next thought a couple of days ago uh, one of my peers did a leadership presentation and used a phrase, a phrase that I've heard so many times in my career. And while I agreed with almost everything that was said on that session, one thing I did not agree with was a statement that you must get out of your comfort zone. Um, I'm gonna tell you the opposite. I'm telling you, you must not get out of your comfort zone. He said, wait a minute, Randy, I've heard my whole life. I need to get out of my comfort zone. Well, how's it worked for you?
<laughs> I don't believe in that principle. And I'll explain to you why. You know, so many years ago, here was Randy. And this is me. It could be you. It could be any of us. But here was Randy. And I was in a very, very, very small comfort zone at that point in time. In fact, I need to change that smile. Here was Randy. I was in a very small comfort zone. And why was I in a very small comfort zone? Well, I was in a small comfort zone because of the way that I'd been conducting my life for the prior years and months leading up to that. I had just been fired from Merrill Lynch had a lifetime suspension from the New York Stock Exchange because I was found mismanaging, abusing client accounts, using unauthorized discretion while under the influence of cocaine. And so 100% the right thing to do. Thank God it was discovered. Thank God I was fired. Thank God I got a lifetime suspension from the New York Stock Exchange. Those are things that had to happen to pave the way for real success later in life. But here I am in my comfort zone. It's very, very small. I mean, I'm feeling like everybody's looking at me. They're pointing at me. They're saying negative things about me. My comfort zone is really, really small at that point in time. And the gentleman that was teaching me, as I've indicated, Nathan, taught me so many things correctly. So many things he taught were literal gifts and taught me was correct. But in that particular case, he taught me something that was wrong. Here I was living in a very small comfort zone. I was compromised in almost every way at that moment in time. And he asked me for my very first home business review. He invited me to make contact with the best, the brightest, the strongest people that I knew. Well, many of you have heard the stories that I've told in my life. Up here was a gentleman, the initials SM, just like Superman, one of the biggest producers in the entire industry, the brokerage industry, financial services industry, uh, the big guy, the name at Merrill Lynch, where I'd been an employee up until that time. And he was the best that I knew. He had enormous influence, trusted and respected by almost everybody. Um, Nathan said to me, Randy, who's your wish list? Who's the person that if they joined you would immediately change your world? Well, that would be Scotty Mills. And he said, okay, I want you to contact Scotty. I said, I could never contact Scotty. I, I was, he, he's here at the top of his game, at the absolute top of his game. Here I am, I'm compromised, way out of my comfort zone. Nathan said, Randy, you're not the opportunity. The company is, get out of your comfort zone and contact Scotty. And so I took a great big leap of faith and I contacted Scotty and, um, so here it was, getting involved in a network marketing company, a multi-level marketing company called Newskin. That was my first affiliation in the industry. And here was Scotty. Scotty was a senior vice president, the biggest, most successful producer at the largest brokerage firm in the world. He was the most successful producer in San Diego County, at least, maybe all of Southern California. And so here he is at the top of his game. Here I am in a completely compromised situation. And so I got right out of my comfort zone. I came up here and I said, Scotty, I think that you should get involved in this multi-level marketing company called Newscan. And how do you suppose that went? Scotty didn't just say no. He didn't just say no to the industry. He said no to me very explicitly, very convincingly. Randy, why in the world would I do anything with you? Given the mess that your life is, I would not want to be in association with you. So what did he do? He stepped on my neck and he ground me into the dirt. Now, how do you suppose that helped me? What about that was constructive? Absolutely nothing. I now retreated to my much smaller comfort zone because of that experience. And so in all of the years since then, whenever I have, I hear the phrase or the word of the guidance, get out of your comfort zone, I literally cringe because getting out of my comfort zone that day almost cost me one of the most successful careers in the history of network marketing. And so I'm going to invite you to do the opposite. Never get out of your comfort zone. If you get out of your comfort zone, you will be uncomfortable. And if you're uncomfortable, your candidate will feel it. And remember that every single thing that we do is teaching another person what they must do. If I'm out of my comfort zone, I will be uncomfortable. The person with whom I'm communicating will sense my lack of comfort. And in the back of their mind, they're saying, oh, if I do this with Randy, I'm going to likewise be uncomfortable. What could be a less attractive message? Almost nothing. And so instead, along the way, a thought came to mind. And now, of course, you all know when I think about that, a thought came to mind, a moment of inspiration. And that moment of inspiration was this. If there is an activity required for success, so here I have an activity that is required for success. If the activity required for success, in this case, the activity of contacting the best, the brightest, the strongest person that I know, if that activity is outside of my comfort zone, then I would counsel you to not get out of your comfort zone. I would instead counsel you to make this shift in thinking. Let me grow my comfort zone into the activity that is required for success. What a different way to address the same situation. 
And so, as opposed to exiting my comfort zone to go up here and talk to the best, the brightest, the absolute strongest, what I did was to react. I went clear to the opposite end. This was a horrible experience talking to Scotty, like a really, really bad experience. He squished me like a bug. I retreated to my now much smaller comfort zone. And so now I took a radical approach. And the radical approach was this. The next many contacts that I made, guess where they went? I, at that time, had a basset hound. And that basset hound, he had the long droopy ears, just like you think. And I'm, my artwork is really special. But here we have my basset hound. And my basset hound was called Fido, F-I-D-E-A-U-X, because he had Cajun roots. And so here was my basset hound, Fido. Now, the next 20, 25, 30 invitations that I made did not go to Scotty Mills or someone like Scotty Mills. I made the next 10, 15, 20, 25 invitations to Fido, who sat and looked at me with those same loving eyes as if I had been handing him a dog treat. You see, I could not face any rejection. Now, was that perfectly comfortable for me? No, that was not perfectly comfortable. That felt foolish. And so you see, it wasn't perfectly comfortable, but it remained inside my comfort zone. You see, inside our comfort zone, we have areas of relatively greater or lesser comfort. For example, if I use our home here as an example, I'm really, really comfortable in our entire home. This is my home for heaven's sakes. But you know where I'm most comfortable? I'm most comfortable either in our master bedroom suite, if Samantha and Bosco are there with me, maybe on the deck outside our master bedroom suite. Um, I'm very, very comfortable right here in this little theater room. It's where I do a lot of I do a lot of work. I spend a lot of time here, both work time and pleasure time. Um, I really, really am comfortable here. I'm very comfortable in our living room. There are other parts of our home that I don't frequent as much. And it's not that I'm uncomfortable there, but I'm not as comfortable. Do you get the feeling? I mean, there are some places in my home where I walk into it and this is my space. This is my this is my place of ultimate comfort. Well, I can still be inside my comfort zone, not being inside my place of ultimate comfort, but perhaps I can be um, in one of the areas where Samantha spends more of her time than where I do, in one of her sitting areas. I'm certainly comfortable there, but that's her sitting area. It's not my sitting area. It's our home. So it's certainly not like I'm an invited guest there, but that's her area, not mine. There's our area, her area, my area family area. Um, Every home, every situation kind of has those spots in it, whether or not they're identified as such. And so by talking to Fido again and again and again, having absolutely no risk of rejection, every single time I made the invitation, and then every single time I made the mock presentation, making it to Fido, every time that did, I did that, what did it do? It moved the wall of my comfort zone over here just a little bit. Now, was it perfectly comfortable? No, it felt foolish. If someone saw me, observed me, heard me doing it, I was embarrassed by it. Was it perfectly comfortable? No. But was it more comfortable than contacting the best and the brightest, the strongest I knew? Yes. I operate on the edge of my comfort zone. And then a little while later, having now extended 15, 20, 25, 30 invitations to Fido, trying to figure out what are the words that I can say that I can say with confidence and conviction, Learning how to do it. The skill to do comes from the doing. Setting up a recording device and listening. Putting on a camera and watching. Do I appear nervous? Do I not appear nervous? Do I seem confident and poised? Do I seem knowledgeable? That which is measured can be improved. And so after 15 or 20 invitations, 5 or 10 presentations, now, now all of a sudden, my comfort zone had extended to include what? Now my comfort zone had been extended to include not the most successful stockbroker in San Diego County, but I had been quite a successful broker. I was among the top three in our office at the time that that happened. I was a successful guy. And so now suddenly inside my comfort zone were all of the brokers who were still living in the company's cubicle farm. They hadn't graduated to offices, or maybe they'd been in an office and been demoted to the cubicle farm, or maybe they'd been in one of the smaller offices for too long. You see, as opposed to at the very outset, you can encapsulate it down to this. I was advised in the very beginning to contact people that I looked up to. That was outside of my comfort zone. The very, the very most aggressive that I would guide a person to 
the most aggressive action I would guide a person to take in the earliest days would not be to contact first those people we look up to, but to contact those people at the very highest end of the scale, those people who we would consider to be our peers in terms of knowledge, skill, current and past success. That's about as close as we can go. And for most people, that will also be knocking on the other door, knocking on the outside, looking in. For most people, even contacting their immediate logical peer will be modestly outside or right on the fringe of their comfort zone. So when instead I then shifted my immediate initial energies, I stopped contacting people that I looked up to and I started contacting people who looked up to me. You see, in so doing, every single time I did that, was that easy? No, but was that dramatically easier than this? Yes, and every single time I did it, you know what I was doing? I was growing my comfort zone into the next category of candidate and having steadily and consistently over a long period of time made presentation after presentation after presentation after presentation. As I make those presentations, always to people who are inside my comfort zone, although it might be on the edge of it, always staying inside my comfort zone, now I'm not being correctly perceived by others as being uncomfortable. I start getting positive results. As I start getting positive results, now I have a little bit of proof of income being added to my gained skill as a result of doing, not as a result of watching, as a result of doing, not as a result of watching somebody else do. Suddenly, I grew my, my comfort zone into, I promise you this, so far as the network marketing industry goes, I have in fact grown my comfort zone into every single activity that is required for success. There is not one activity required for success in this industry that falls outside of my comfort zone. How did that happen? It happened as a result of identifying every activity which is required for success, then being willing to operate on the very fringes of my comfort zone, getting to the point of beginning to feel that first tweak of uncomfortableness, and then realizing that slightly too far, inching right back inside this comfort zone, working there, knowing that every time I do it, I am softening this barrier. Someday, one day, the barrier will go away, and before I know it, I will be confidently acting inside my comfort zone, there is no longer any person, any category of person or individual that it would give me pause to contact. Why? Every single skill, every single activity and behavior required for success at what we do for a living, I have been brought into my comfort zone as a result of acting on the borders and fringes thereof. Now, that little thought that I just shared with you, that has for me been worth tens of millions of dollars. I didn't say hundreds of thousands of dollars. I said tens of millions of of dollars. You, as an individual, you identify what you consider to be the activities required for success. Now, you know, if you're listening to my content, um, that I have given you some guidance. What are the activities required for success? Well, learning to so live our life so that instead of staying stagnant in terms of our overall influence on others, that we are growing, that we're expanding the number of people with whom we would have influence or friendship over time. That requires that we not be stuck in the same little cocoon that many of us are in. Let our life get bigger. Bigger lives are more fun. I promise you that. I've lived big lives. I've lived small lives. I've lived, I've lived a life that is measured by the size of a prison cell. And I've lived a life that is measured by the size of the world. Let me tell you, living a big life is more fun than living a small life. Living a big life is a life that can benefit other people. Living a small life is, in fact, living a selfish life. That is the truth. And none of us want to be considered by others or by ourselves as being selfish. Far from it. Grow your comfort zone into the activity required for success. Uh, perhaps nothing, nothing that I can describe to you that will wind up ultimately being of greater importance than that. So at the very outset, what did I describe? I described the fact that I've been encouraging people to begin taking ownership of their business, to do more than being a conduit to a leader, but to in fact begin engaging in all of the activities required for success yourself. First, having a heavy dose of willingness to engage in that activity, even though the immediate outcome may not be the surface outcome you might think would be desired. The surface outcome of a home business review being to enroll some people. That's the surface outcome. That is a really, really small outcome. You enroll a person or two that night. What's the big outcome? Becoming the individual who can enroll whenever you want. The big outcome is becoming the leader that can help other people enroll whenever they want. And so my thoughts again, going back to the earliest part of the content commentary was that if you conducted a home business review and no one enrolled, Congratulations, fantastic. Continue conducting them and someday somebody will. 
And remember this, if we conduct them steadily and st steady and consistently day after day, week after week, if we always do it, then the laws of the universe will conspire on our behalf. Then we will find those people who are looking for what we have. When we find those who are looking for what we have, then we won't have to convince those who are not looking that they should be interested. One need not develop great persuasion skills in this business. In fact, great persuasion skills often lead to the very wrong behavior, trying to convince somebody else to do what we want them to do, as opposed to identifying what that person would like to do, and then being the most effective guide that we possibly can into the attitudes, actions, behaviors, skills, knowledge, all of it that is required to access that. Okay, so with those things being said, it should be no surprise to anyone that I'm looking for my, there we go. It should be no surprise to anyone that I have a great sense of urgency for you. Not so much for me. I have a great sense of urgency for you that we develop a group of leaders who are able to function in every single capacity in this business. A leader does what? A leader creates other leaders. A leader does not, by definition, create a bunch of followers who remain followers. Every leader will by definition have those whose personal goals and objectives do not require that they develop leadership attributes. And so therefore, it is folly, it is a mistake to try to, to try to cause someone who does not have the burning desire to develop leadership skills to develop them. It is to gracefully allow each person to find their seat on the bus, whatever the seat is. If that seat is to be a conduit to a leader, then fantastic, let each of us be the very best leader we could possibly be. If their desire is to develop leadership attributes themselves such that one day they're totally self-sufficient, fantastic. Then we, then we realize that if we're doing something for another because we could do it better, if we're doing something for another because we could do it better, then we're making a mistake and we're hurting them, not helping them. For those who want to grab the brass ring, we must be not just willing, but we must be excited about their willingness to do it poorly first. Because as they do it poorly first, that is what is creating the individual who can do it well down the road. It is when one develops network marketing muscles. When you develop those network marketing muscles, when they're toned and when they're fit, that is when all of a sudden those things which might otherwise seem somewhat challenging become very, very easy. Now, I want to remind you all, once again, what are the three foundation pieces for the development of a large, successful network marketing organization? What are the three foundation pieces for the development of a large, successful Needle Life organization? The first one is a rapid flow of new member applications. That is what it is, a rapid flow of new member applications. If you want to know right now, do you want to know how to have a rapid flow of new member applications in your group? What if your group has just you and five other people in it? Six people total. If you six people all in the next 10 days opened your homes individually, if over the course of the next seven days, you identified a candidate list, identified a proper script, utilized a proper tool to let a, let a script, to let a tool talk, if just you six people in your organization all opened your home 10 days from now with the target of having seven people in each of your homes, the odds are you'd probably have an average of two, maybe three. That's probably what would happen. But that would not create, you. that wouldn't create the surface outcome that matters. The surface outcome is that maybe half of you would enroll one or two people and half of you would not. That's the surface outcome. The bigger outcome, the under the surface outcome is what? Now we would have six people who had had their first experience of conducting a home business review, six people who are more able the next week to do that which is required to succeed. If instead we six people simply send our candidate to a Zoom, seven or eight or 10 more days will have gone by and we will have no more leadership capacity in our group 10 days from now than we have today. And if we have no more leadership capacity in our group 10 days from now than we have today, our group will not be measurably larger 30 days from today than it is today. That is the absolute truth. And so every single thing that we do in this business should have the first, the first target of creating a more rapid flow of new member applications. The creation of a rapid flow of new member applications is the first foundation piece which must be in place. And I remind you all of this simple fact that a number of years ago, I was living in Taiwan at the time, and I spent six months uh, in a suite in the Grand Hyatt in Taipei. And at that time, just across the way, I was able to watch the construct, the uh, beginning construct of uh, the Taipei 101, which for a short season was the tallest building in the world. And as, as I watched, and, and I didn't stay there uh, for six months straight, but I'd be there for a month and I'd be gone for a couple of days and I'd come back and I'd be there for two weeks and I'd be gone for three weeks and I'd come back and I'd be there, but always in the same suite, always the same window. Um, I had a, a little office set up in that suite. And, um, and each time as I came, I watched with complete fascination because when they 
when they started construction, did they start going up? Is that what they did? Did they start going up? No, they did not. Before they even started construction, what did they do? They dug a very deep hole. If this was ground level here, they dug a deep hole below ground. And in that deep hole is where they put the foundation. And that is the same way that our business works. And so here was the foundation. Over here were the cornerstones of that foundation. And here was the foundation. And then on top of that foundation, ultimately was constructed a building that was more than 100 stories tall. Today, all around the world, people recognize the, the, the look of Taipei 101. Very, very recognizable architecture. But you know what? What they don't realize is that down here, the part they cannot see is what makes possible the standing, the staying erect of that tower. If this foundation were not properly in place, the tower could not exist. A network marketing organization that is a large one, I promise you, you can't see why it is and remains large if it does. It is because down here, what you can't even see are three foundation pieces. And that first foundation piece is a rapid flow of new member applications. Minus a rapid flow of new member applications, there cannot be the construct of a large business. The business will crumble. By the way, have you ever seen an office tower built on a slab? I have not. You can see a home, a small structure built on a slab, but you'll never see a large building built on a slab. There will be a foundation way down deep into the ground, pilings put in place, steel, concrete, bricks and mortar, all kinds of stuff down here that you cannot see. The first foundation piece is a rapid flow of new member applications. Folks, I don't expect my message to always be popular. In fact, I anticipate in many cases my message will not be popular. The first foundation piece is to have a three to one new member application flow, at least as it relates to your core leadership structure, your core leadership. Um, I, and I know that my message will not be popular with many. I'm okay with that. I do not have a right to describe myself as a leader in this company if I do not personally enroll three new people this month. That's the truth. If I am one, if I don't enroll three, this is $79, folks. If I don't enroll three people, then that is suggesting that I'm wanting my group to do something that I am not currently willing to do, and that is never going to happen. It cannot happen. And so I will tell you that so far this month, I have already met my standard. My standard is I will not allow a 30-day period to go by where I don't enroll at least three. Uh, my standard, honestly, my personal standard is I want, I seek to, I have a target to personally enroll one new member every day. Does that happen? No, it doesn't happen every day. Uh, but I've enrolled way more than one person per day since first getting involved with Mila Life. Um, I, I've already done enough enrolling that when 90 days goes by, if I don't enroll anybody else, I will have enrolled one person per day throughout that period of time. And that takes, by the way, that requires that I combine my account with Samantha's account and so on. But nevertheless, first is a rapid flow of new member applications. A rapid flow of new member applications. Is that an activity or is that an outcome? No, that is an outcome. It is an outcome of what? What are the activities that lead to that outcome? It is an outcome of, first of all, knowing how to create a candidate list, knowing how to invite, knowing how to present the business in a fashion that can duplicate, and then knowing how to do proper new member orientations. Those are the outcomes. But those are the activities. But those activities must then be multiplied by a daily activity standard. And so I have a daily activity standard that requires of me that I make a certain number of touches, as I call them, touching each day. And my requirement of myself is that I touch six people per day and give them the chance to opt in or opt out. Now, I have some really wise, very good friends who know more about this business than me, who periodically caution me and say, Randy, the numbers you talk about are too big. People can't relate to them. When you tell them that you talk to six, that's going to scare people away. Folks, some days I talk to 60 and some days I talk to 100. Um, if you're scared away by that, then please understand there's a place in this company for you. It's just not the same seat that I want to occupy. You get to choose whatever seat you want to occupy in this company. And had I gone to uh, my first presentation and someone hadn't shown me the biggest picture of all, I would not have acted upon it. And so I want you to know if you're interested in something really, really small, well, it's here for you. What's the smallest thing? Just be a customer, be a member of our service. Um, I believe that you get way more than $59 in value every single month from any month that you're a Neela Life member. And I believe that's true today, not just in the future when more products, services, and offerings are added to the mix. I believe that is true today. I think it's worth more than $59 per month to be a Neela Life member. And because I believe that, then I'm very, very willing and eager to offer it to other people. You say, Randy, I'm gonna run out of somebody to talk to six a day, where's that gonna come from? Ah, if you just thought that, then what you thought was, where am I going to get the people? And what I thought was, 
Have you been listening to the content? We must learn to so live our lives so that our circle of influence grows. We must learn to so live our lives so that people we don't know yet become our warm market tomorrow. Now, much of what I talk about is a process, not an event. It's a process, not an event. That is why I discuss all the time the investment of time capital. We're going to have to invest enough time capital so that we can act upon the already proven process steadily and consistently enough days, weeks, and months, and maybe years in a row that that which before seemed very, very difficult becomes very, very easy, and that someday, one day, without thinking about it, trying, you realize that you're automatically, as a, as a simple part of your daily basic living pattern, You've learned to live your life in such a way that your candidate list grows in front of you. Your, your confidence and belief has become effervescent. It flows over the top. Therefore, we don't ask somebody to join us. We grant someone the opportunity to join us. What a different thought, huh? If I'm asking someone to join me, then they've got something for me. If I'm giving them an opportunity to join me, then I'm proposing that I have something for them. All these little, I don't even call them tricks, and they're not mind games. They're a reflection of my own deep-seated opinions and beliefs. My opinion and belief is that my total life experience today is better because a number of years ago, I embraced the principles which govern the network marketing industry. My total life experience is better because I sought out leadership who knew how to do what I wanted to do and who, for whatever reason, were willing to invest their time, effort, energy, and sometimes money. And my own success money, you say, well, yeah, sometimes they bought an airplane ticket and flew somewhere to visit my group. They invested money in my success. Many of you don't know. Many of you don't know. It's not just me. There are other leaders. We invest our money in your success. A couple of days from now, I'll be in New England. And, you know, I, I remember so many years ago, I think it was Craig Tillotson was talking to me. And, and he said, Randy, whenever you discover that I'm traveling anywhere, and you'll always see me post it at the various Facebook groups, if you see that I'm traveling anywhere, then what I'd like to have you do is roll over in your mind, oh, Randy's going to New England. Randy is going right to Martha's Vineyard next week, and he's doing it for me. The only reason Randy's going to Martha's Vineyard next, next week is for me. And so since he's leaving his family at home, he's buying an airplane ticket, he's flying there, he's staying in a hotel room, and he's doing it for me, then what I need to do is make 100% sure that I've got somebody in that room for him to talk to, because I don't want him to fly all the way to Martha's Vineyard. I don't want him to do that for me and have no one be in attendance as a result of my efforts. You know, right now, if we just took the little teeny tiny size of my organization right now, if we took the little teeny tiny size of Nila Life right now, took the whole thing in concert and said every person, every person said, you know what, I am not gonna let Randy or anybody, I'm not gonna let Randy, I'm not gonna let John, I'm not gonna let Eric, I'm not gonna let, I'm not gonna let any leader in this company buy an airplane ticket and fly anywhere for me and me not have that be worth their time and while. And so you see on the surface, ostensibly, it could be viewed that I'm flying to New England this week for my hostess. Well, of course, to a degree that is true. I'm flying there for my hostess. But you know what? I'm flying there for you, for any of you who are willing to revisit your candidate list and say, and who do I know in or around Martha's Vineyard? And who could I extend an invitation to utilizing a properly constructed script today or tomorrow? So that when Randy gets there in a couple of days, it can fit on the right place in the ladder of escalation for me to send them over to arrive at a concluding point. You see, I decided at that early point in my career that I, here we had this, I had this amazing group of leadership who were traveling the country and the world. And I just decided, you know what, whenever they're doing that for me, I'm going to fully leverage that moment. And last week, a couple of days ago, I was in Dallas. And I think that most of you didn't stop and scratch your head and query your telephone and say, who do I know in the 813 or the 214 or the all the different area codes in and around? Who do I know within a three or four hour drive distance? Randy's flying there and he's doing it for me. I need to make sure that his time is well invested on my behalf. You know, a couple of days, just the, the day before that, I was someplace in Florida or the week before that. I mean, it's steady and consistent. Understand this. Some people could look at the way that I work today and say, well, gosh, Randy, I don't really want to do that. That's not what I want to do. Well, what outcome do you want? You see, over the course of my career, if you were to look at it carefully in a 34-year career now, uh, there have been about 27 or 8 of those years when I've worked about as little as anybody you can imagine, <laughs> really. Some of those years didn't work at all. Um, and I've made more money than most people can imagine during all of those years. How did it happen? It happened because I've invested my life, my business experience with these final thoughts. There is always a project whose time is right. I won't always find it. There's always a project whose time is right. I won't always find it. But if I find a project whose time is right, then I will clear the decks. I will clear the decks. 
and I'll make whatever kind of sacrifice is required, any kind of sacrifice required within the context of proper judgment and goodwill. I would certainly not make a sacrifice of time that would damage my relationship with Samantha. I wouldn't make a sacrifice of time that would damage my relationship with Bosco or my other children or grandchildren. There are appropriate sacrifices, but I will make every single appropriate sacrifice for a relatively short period of time so that I make certain that I'm able to capture that moment of opportunity. A moment of opportunity to what? A moment of opportunity to be part of the foundation upon which others are going to build, in my opinion, for decades to come. All right, write this down so you heard it here first. If you want a breakthrough financial experience, you cannot be among those who build upon a foundation already set in place. Up here, you can make a living, a really good living. Down here, you can create wealth. If you learn the difference in making money, having money, and turning that earned money into invested assets, which produce positive return. But it all starts with making yourself eligible to create the foundation upon which others build. First foundation piece, be creating a rapid an organizational structure whose natural outcome is to have a rapid flow of new member applications. The primary, the primary activity involved in doing that is you opening your home. Your group will not do what you do not do. It is followed to think otherwise. This company could double in size next week. If every member in the United States said, you know what, next week I'm going to open my home, I'm going to conduct a home business review, I'm going to invite seven people with the idea that if two show up, that's good. If two show up, one will be involved in your business a week later. We could double the size of this company if the membership in the United States alone said, next week I'm going to conduct a home business review. That would then begin positioning you to become a part of the foundation upon which others build. The second foundation point is to make absolutely certain we have a rapid flow of new member applications and that we guide each of these people into their correct positioning in the company, whether it be being a conduit to a leader, whether it be developing leadership attributes ourselves, or whether it simply be the user of the service. This foundation piece is the foundation piece that correctly helps each new participant find the right seat on the bus and not try to get a person out of the seat where they belong into a different seat. Don't try to make a leader out of one who wants instead to benefit from leadership that's already in place. Don't try to make a business builder out of one who simply wants to use our service. But don't restrict the possibility. Don't limit the dream of one who wants to become a part of the foundation upon which others build. Help each one find the right seat on the bus and then help them occupy that seat as well as you can. The next foundation piece is what? It is to create a long-term buy-in, a long-term commitment. Uh, I am not interested in someone joining our business to give it a try. If you want to give it a try, then give our service a try. Don't give our business a try. If you give our business a try, you will fail. And I'd rather not have that message be delivered to anybody else. If you want to give it a try, become a consumer of our value-added products and services as a part of the Neo Life lifestyle community. If you want to do our business, then do it. And do it in specific and complete alignment with the 10 steps to getting started correctly and the ladder of escalation. Once you've developed the skills, gathered the knowledge and developed the skills required to get the key in the lock of modest success, modest success up to 10, 15, $20,000 per month. That still qualifies as modest success in my book. That is when one then turns his or her attention to development of leadership attributes in oneself. Then one becomes skillful in helping others develop leadership attributes. That is when we can finally transfer the ton of knowledge and leadership to another. That is when the income takes on a life of its own. That is when the dream, the dream of network marketing is fully realized. Um, I've lived that dream for a long time and uh, I feel like I prepared myself well for this moment. Don't know if it's just your starting point or if it's midpoint of your career, the conclusion of the career. Understand this. We each get a few times in our life. That's my belief. We get a few times to ring the bell. This is a moment of opportunity. If you seek, if you choose to make it your moment, then please know this. I and others would like to help you make this your moment. Those are my thoughts for May 8, 2024 to our Nina Life community. Have a wonderful day.